Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Very few lightning strikes on 4 Live radar this afternoon, but we will not be able to say the same thing for the 4th. Your holiday forecast is next. Mara. Ben, Detroit police have been exhuming bodies across the metro trying to solve cold cases, but what they found this last time, not what they were expecting. All right, Mara, and developing right now, we've learned a woman has died. Two other people badly burned in a house fire in Sterling Heights. Start there at 5 o'clock. The chief tells us the two surviving victims suffered burns to more than 30 to 40 percent of their bodies. Happened this morning at a home on Mariano Drive, right in the area of Dodge Park and Metro Parkway. As Coco McAvoy reports, neighbors heard the screams and rushed in to help. Investigators are trying to figure out what happened here this morning. You can see the home is heavily damaged by smoke and some of the windows are broken. But neighbors say they banded together this morning to try to help once the fire started. And family members are devastated. There are no words, just raw emotion. After family members found out their loved one passed away in a house fire this morning. Heavy smoke billowed from the home. Four people were trapped inside. We were on the patio and we heard somebody screaming. Carol Yee lives next door and says several neighbors immediately tried to help. My husband ran out. He had a fire extinguisher. They broke out all the windows in the back. The father got out of the house and tried running back in to save the others. His youngest son ran out and he was just covered with soot. Firefighters rescued two other victims who were critically injured with severe burns, but 18-year-old Christian Koki did not survive. We just hope, remember in our prayers, that's all I could say. Yi describes her neighbors as caring people with a close family. They're a sweet family. You couldn't ask for a better neighbor. They're always there. They're always friendly. A very close-knit family. Now neighbors and family are in disbelief trying to wrap their heads around what happened this morning. And again, this is obviously very devastating for family members. This was a sudden fire. It happened out of nowhere. They were not obviously expecting this, so they really need everyone to band together and help them in any way that they can. They have created a GoFundMe page. We put it on our website, cookondetroit.com. Back to you. Well, any idea yet for firefighters what started it, Coco? Yes, so fire investigators say they're in the beginning stages of their investigation. However, they do believe that the fire started in the kitchen. In the kitchen. All right, Coco. Now to Lapeer County, where a large barn bursts into flames. Yeah, a tremendous video here from Sky 4 of that fire at Brown City Road in M53. You can see the building fully involved there. We don't have any word on injuries or what caused this, but we will have updates as we learn more. And you're looking at video from Sky 4 of a small float plane that crashed and overturned in Lake Pleasant, which is located in Attica Township, just west of North Lake Pleasant Road and Bowers Road. No word on any injuries or the cause of this crash. So another day, another storm threat heading into tonight. Of That's course. how it's been. Yeah, all on the heels of last night's severe weather yeah. that caused several power outages around the area. And we just got an update, by the way, from DTE. 17,000 customers still without power. They do hope to have it all restored before midnight tonight. We can get over to Ben and get the latest uh, before we head into the holiday. Yeah, guys, crew's getting a break because there's not a lot in the way of activity as far as storms go. And the stuff that's popping up is not living very long. Some pretty stable air is really putting a lid on these thunderstorms. Most of the, what we're going to see is going to pop south of 8 Mile tonight. We're not anticipating any severe storms and just some lightning strikes and very slow moving downpours. The good news is those storms aren't lasting very long, uh, but you can see that haze. That's one indication of the stability out there. Temperatures are in the mid 80s generally, which is cooler than yesterday. Still humid, though. Heat index readings are at least getting near 90 degrees in a couple spots. So here's your all important 4th of July number. We're going to get up to 88, feeling like the low 90s, and there will be a few thunderstorms tomorrow. We'll talk timing on this and the relief in your seven-day forecast coming up, guys. All right, Ben. Detroit police saying they've identified all of the seven bodies exhumed in May, but they didn't expect what they just recently found. No, and this is all a part of uh, Operation United, which is a project aimed at identifying homicide victims from cases that go back decades. Mara McDonald is live at police headquarters. A really long and difficult process, but an important one, Mara. 
It is, Devin. And you know, the first round of exhumations, they identified all seven bodies that they were looking for. This second round of exhumations, six of the bodies they were looking for weren't there. And these are cases that go back, some in cases, to the 50s. As far as these homicide victims, we're not talking about recent cases. We're talking about cases that were 10, 20 years old. So there's just open cases where we, um, we need to, it's, it's essential that we identify who the victim is so we can move forward. Which is proving easier said than done. The idea is to go through cold cases from a time where DNA samples are not available, exhume these unidentified remains and get some DNA and identify these victims. It actually started in May uh, at Knollwood Cemetery in Canton. Uh, we exhumed seven bodies. We were able to uh, identify all seven. Um, so that was a success. They're calling this Operation United, and it's a collaborative effort between DPD, the feds, Wayne County prosecutor, and the medical examiner's office. The first round of exhumations were a success, but the second round were not. They were only able to ID one of the remains, and they're still looking for six others. It sounds like the cemetery records are bad, which is why DPD was out there yesterday with a warrant. It's concerning, very difficult, um, but our members are, are dedicated and, and their goal is to help try to bring closure to, to these homicide cases. So uh, we're going to go through the records and see if we can um, identify the additional six remains. Back here live, those six remains were not where they were supposed to be. In addition to their warrant, DPD has also notified the state that there's something off here with these records. I don't think anybody thinks that anything is malfeasance or anything like that right now. They're just trying to figure out where these remains might be. We are live at Detroit Police Headquarters. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Okay, Mara. Clinton Township Police have a man in custody after an hours-long search overnight for a suspected gunman at Bud Park. Yeah, police say Bud Park does remain closed as they investigate. They, that gunman fired a shot and hit an occupied car. Police shut down the area. Uh, they shut down the park after they got reports of a distraught person with a rifle. Police used drones and a helicopter to look for him, and he was found and arrested just after 3 a.m. Meanwhile, Detroit police are looking for a suspect in a deadly shooting, and they are asking for your help this afternoon in finding him. Here's surveillance video of that suspect. Police say he shot and killed a man in June on Harper near Connor on the city's east side. Police say that shooting happened after an argument, and the man was shot sitting in a car in a parking lot. Detroit police asking you to call them or 1-800-SPEAK-UP if you recognize the man in the video. And on the city's west side, Detroit police are investigating a shooting that happened this morning. This was the scene on Marlowe Street near Lydon, and that is where police say they found a man shot dead in a Cadillac that was still running. Police had the street blocked off. They had to keep some emotional bystanders away from the scene. Uh, we are told there is not a suspect in the case yet. We'll pass along more information as we learn more. Prosecutors say he stalked and then sexually assaulted a 16-year-old boy. Now Ali Kadu is headed to trial. He was charged with criminal sexual conduct, stalking, and more. The victim said Kadu had followed him on his walk home from school twice before he was allegedly attacked by him. That victim broke down when asked how this has all affected him. I don't like looking at myself in the mirror. <laughs> I feel ugly every day <laughs> after this happened. Um, I'm not happy no more. This all happened near Pickford and Burgess on Detroit's west side. That was in May. Police arrested Kadu after the victim called them while hiding in an abandoned house. He'll be back in court later this month. Final preparations are underway for tomorrow's revised Independence Day celebration as we take a look at the Capitol. Uh, tanks, troops, flyovers, and yes, extra security leading to extra costs for President Trump's salute to America. President Trump's vision of displaying U.S. military might becoming reality as tanks take up positions near the Lincoln Memorial for Thursday's salute to America. The president promising the show of a lifetime, critics seeing a different visual. When I think of tanks and troops walking down the, in the, down the middle, it's, I'm thinking Red Square, um, North Korea, Egypt, um, not the United States. The president has added fighter jet flyovers, Air Force One, and the Blue Angels. I think it's totally worth it, whatever they want to do to celebrate the military. If he makes it a political statement, I think a lot of people will be will be upset. President defending his 4th of July event, saying it will cost very little. We own the planes and all we need is the fuel.
But according to Pentagon estimates, the F-35 costs about $30,000 an hour to fly. Flying Air Force One is more than $140,000 an hour. Today, the Washington Post reports the National Park Service is diverting $2.5 million toward the celebration, money that had been intended for parks across the country. And there's extra layers of security for the president's address paid for by taxpayers. If there are demonstrations and protests um, that sprout up around these activities, those are additional police costs as well. Police are bracing for opposing points of view. The baby Trump blimp is expected to make an appearance, adding to the spectacle of fighting vehicles on the 4th of July to celebrate the nation's birthday. Yeah, some Pentagon leaders worry this display could put the military in a awkward, quote, political position. Well, Detroiters have a new place to pick up groceries or lunch in downtown. Yeah, Plum Market is now open at the Allied Detroit Center off Woodward, a couple of blocks away from Campus Martius. The new store offers fast, casual dining and even uh, some select grocery items, milk, eggs, and hey, if you're like me and you like those prepared meals, you can just grab and go and eat for lunch. They have that too. Just a couple blocks from us. Nice, nice addition. One more option. One for more. That's right. Set up dinner. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting warmed up on a Wednesday. Here's Dr. McGeorge. It started with a little girl complaining that she couldn't see the board at school, but Sarah didn't need glasses. Something far more serious was going on. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Today at five, what her teacher noticed that raised a red flag and the symptoms that you should watch out for in your children. All right, Frank, and fearing the worst in Lansing, a desperate search underway after a boy went into the water and did not come back up. Hank. The fans are going, the windows open, the AC is off. A huge problem for many seniors living in this building. And tonight, help me, Hank, working to get answers.